Here we go, guys. Coffee cups up. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in to Morning Word. It is February the 8th, 2021. Our Morning Word is God finishes his work. Amen. God finishes his work. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, Paul is writing to the church at Philippi. It's the first church that he established on his second missionary journey. It's in, it was in Macedonia, which is today the northern part of Greece. And uh, Paul got arrested there uh, when he was there uh, and then um, got out. And of course, he is writing this letter. He's in Roman uh, incarceration. He's under house arrest. Uh, he gets subsequently released from this imprisonment and is arrested some two or three years later where he then uh, has his life taken from him by the Roman authorities as Rome grew increasingly more hostile against the Christian faith, the Christian movement. Nevertheless, while he's in prison and under house arrest, he is writing this letter back to the church at Philippi and the whole theme of the book of Philippians is joy, joy in the midst of every kind of circumstance. Now, happy has to do with um, happenings. If you want to kind of equate happy with happenings, it, it happy goes up and down with what's happening, but joy is an abiding, ever-present uh, satisfaction of the soul uh, through a relationship with Christ, knowing that God's promises are yes and amen, and that God is going to finish his work, which is exactly what Paul is telling the Philippian church here. Now, let's look at verse 3. Paul says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. That's the first time he uses the word. I think he uses it 16 times in this letter. Making requests for you all with joy, for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day, that's when Paul came to visit them uh, the very first time on his missionary journey, from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun <clears throat> a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ, just as it is right for me to think this of you all, and then he goes on and he finishes the verse. So Paul said that he was confident that what God had started in them. Now, how did God start it? It was through the preaching of Paul that they came to know Christ and received him as their personal savior. And that was the beginning. So the beginning of God's work for us was in the birth of Jesus Christ. Well, you could work it all the way from eternity, but when we're, if we're talking about in time and space, the beginning of Christ's work for us was his incarnation when he came to reveal the Father to us. Secondly, through his life, he upheld and fulfilled every requirement of God's law. Thirdly, he went to the cross to be punished for our sin where we, have, where we had transgressed God, God's law. So on one side, he positively upheld the law with his own sinless, righteous life. On the other hand, he paid for the penalty of breaking the law, which is what we did, and he paid the price on the cross and God punished him for it. Now, that was his work for us to bring us to God the Father, to reconcile us. When we put, and when the Philippian people put their faith now in a Christ who had come and had died and had rose again, when they put their faith in him, now Christ began a good work in them because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, when we are born again, we are born again by the Spirit and of the Spirit, and he comes to indwell us. We are indwelt. We are the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, and he comes to live inside of us. So our salvation, which has to do with the forgiveness of our sin, and the new birth, that happens instantaneously in a moment. But then our continuing salvation, that's what we call, some people call it our sanctification, that is an ongoing process that goes on till the time in we, that we die and that we go into be in the presence of the Lord. So all along the way from the time that we get saved all the way until the time when we 
go to meet the Lord or he comes to back to earth. All of that time, God is doing a work in us. He's doing a work in us by the Holy Spirit. And Paul said that he was confident that he who had begun a good work in them, that is, at their salvation, Paul was confident that God would finish it. Now, that should be a comfort to us because God does. God is not going to give up on you today. You know, if you stumble and fall and get sideways and stupid, um, and all of us can do that, we're all capable of that. Most of us do that a couple of times a day at least. Uh, God is going to not throw you to the side. God's not going to kick you off the team. God's not going to take your helmet and make you sit down. God's going to finish his work. Now, we're not going to get into how he does that. What we're going to focus on this morning is that he does do that. God's not going to give up on you. He's going to continue to work in you so that you should not be discouraged in your spiritual growth with where you are now. Just know that God is not done with you yet. God isn't finished with you yet. And it's, it may seem like you're way behind other people today. And you go, man, I wish I was like so-and-so. I, I wish I was like so-and-so. They're so spiritual. They pray so good. They never miss reading their Bible. They're so, you know, I never hear them say a bad word about people. You know, now listen, listen. There are some people that are like that. But uh, everyone puts their pants on the same way. <laughs> everyone... Um, Everyone messes up. There's a blip on on the radar screen for everyone. Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Beth Moore, you know, they all have blemishes in their life because they are not perfect. But praise be unto God, God is not finished with them yet and God is not finished with us yet. And uh, there are some things that I'm having to learn that God may have already taught you. And there's some things that you're uh, got that you're still working on that that I don't have a problem with. We're all at different places in our walk with the Lord, but we're all in the same place in the sense that we're all in the Lord, and that we're all His children, and that we're all being brought to a place of maturity. That God is growing us up. Uh, we all have shortcomings. We all are an incomplete work today or an unfinished work, we would say, uh, in our uh, fleshly man and in our, the renewing of our mind. And you might uh, be around some people, you know, that are that really challenge you in your faith. Now, that's, that's good to be challenged, but it's not good, excuse me, to be discouraged. Be challenged in your faith and in your walk with the Lord, but don't be discouraged. Look at other people and be inspired don't be depressed, don't be angered, don't be resentful, and don't be jealous. God's going to finish his work in your life. Now, here's how he's, one of the ways he's doing this, and I just wanted to encourage you with this this morning. I'm going to turn over to Hebrews chapter 7. I'm going to turn over to Hebrews chapter 7, and you might want to write out beside here in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, you might want to just write out a, a verse here in the margin of your Bible to refer you back to this. But in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25, it's talking about, the writer of Hebrews is talking about how Jesus is our high priest. And the priest in the Old Testament stood between the people and God, and they ministered between the people and God and between God and the people. They represented the people to God, they represented God to the people. They were in the, the, the middleman, so to speak. That's what the priest did. Well, what they couldn't do in that they were weak human flesh just like you and I, uh, Jesus did. He became our, our high priest. And he doesn't need to offer a sacrifice for sin every day. His once and for all sacrifice was good enough to pay for our sin. Now, here's what it says in, in, first, I mean, in Hebrews 7, 25. But he, talking about Jesus, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Verse 25, I mean, that was 24, verse 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. 
Now, here's something that ought to comfort you this morning. God's going to finish his work in your life. And you know one of the reasons that he's going to do that. First of all, Christ has finished the work himself. But the second thing is, is Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you by name every single day. Every single day. And so it ought to be a comfort to you. You can't hear it with your, your ears, but here's what you can know that Jesus is praying for you today. When you feel like you've you messed up and you've screwed up and you can't get up and everyone else is getting ahead of you in the race of life, you just need to know this, that Jesus is gonna finish his work in you and God's gonna finish his work in you and he's gonna not throw you to the side and he's gonna continue to do his work in you because Jesus is praying for you. Lord God Almighty, I need it. I know you need it. And I can just hear him right now. Lord, don't give up on Randy today. Uh, uh, I died for him. And uh, he, he, uh, it looks like he takes one step forward and two steps back. And it looks like he's going backwards and everybody else is going forward. But, but Father, he's, um, I love him and, and he needs help. And, the, and just all I can say is just, just put the blood on his life. He needs your help. Now, I'm being a little bit facetious there, but also I'm being truthful. I need God's prayer. I need the prayer of Jesus over my life every day. I need that blood applied every day over my life. Now, some of you more sanctified people that's way on out there in front of us, don't, don't turn around and laugh at us because God ain't finished with us yet. We coming, amen? Uh, I'll share this because that reminded me when I said that. I'll share this to kind of give you an analogy. When uh, we were running a tough motor race, uh, Jimmy Maddox and I, he invited me to do it. I, I don't know. I guess I had a momentary lapse of reasoning. I don't know why I agreed to do that, but I did it. I hadn't been running in years and years and years. I had my car wrecked. My legs and hips were all jacked up. Couldn't run right. My nerves in my legs didn't work. My foot didn't work right. And Jimmy said, let's do a Tough Mudder. I'm going crazy. Let's do a Tough Mudder. I said, okay. So I trained to do a Tough Mudder. I said, how far is the Tough Mudder, Jimmy? He said, 12 miles. I go, 12 miles? He goes, yeah, it's 12 miles. It's through obstacles, and we're going to run. We're going to do it together. I said, okay, all right, here we go. So we take off, you know, clippity-clop, clippity-clop, clippity-clop. And, uh, oh, uh, Dad gummit, um, who married Stedman Sheely's uh, daughter that went? Jed Rutherford. Jed Rutherford. My Lord, I can't, I, I shouldn't ever forget Jed. Oh, Jed Rutherford. He came running up behind me. And uh, he said, hey, Pastor Randy, you going to make it? I go, yeah, Jed, I'm going to make it. You know, I'm going to boom, 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 boom. Dun, dun, dun. You know, I'm running like that. Oh, Jed, he's he's super athlete. He's younger than me by about 20 years or whatever it is. He starts jogging backwards. He's looking at me. Come on, Pastor Randy, I'm going to wait on you, you know. And he, he's kind of taunting me and messing with me, jacking with me. Well, I said, you go on, Jed. I said, I, I, I'm, I'm going to finish. You just go on ahead of me. So he took on off up there ahead of me. Got out of sight here. I, boom, yeah, boom, 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 boom. You know, I'm going down through there. In just a few minutes, I see Jed, and Jed's walking. And I, I come running up. Well, I, I, I use that word loosely. I, I don't think I was running. I was kind of banging and clanging. And I come running, clanging and banging and clanging up beside Jed. I go, Jed, what's the matter? He says, oh, Pastor Ant. Oh, Pastor Ant. I think I, I think I pulled a hamstring. Oh, Pastor Ant, I can't hardly walk. I said, it'll be all right, Jed. Just don't stop. I'll wait on you when I get to the finish line. I pass that sap sucker. And uh, he came clippity-clopping up through there with his jacked-up hamstring. So listen, guys, listen. There's some people that's out in front of you right now, uh, and we, none of us need to get the high hat and look down our nose at other people. God's going to finish with us, and, and you might get out in front of us a long way there, but uh, don't, don't get haughty now. Uh, you, you might get jacked up and sideways and we come on past you. But here's the deal. I finished jacked up leg and all, and Jed Rutherford finished, jacked up hamstring and all. We finished. Now, we looked like uh, a, a seven miles of bad road when we got there, but we finished. And so God's going to finish his work in your life. It doesn't matter who's in front right now. Uh, when we cross the finish line, we're done, and, we're, and God's going to make sure we finish because Jesus is praying for us, and he has done a good work for us on the cross and he's doing a good work in us by the Holy Spirit and through this word right here. And uh, so you just stay the course. You just stay on the course. You just hold on to this word and just keep believing God. And Jesus is praying for you. He's going to pray you and I straight across that finish line. So don't you worry about it, all right? 
Listen, what God starts, he finishes. What God starts, he finishes. He has never lost one sheep, not one. If he starts with a hundred and loses one, he'll leave the 99 and go find it. He's not gonna get, he's not gonna show up shorthanded before the father. He said, all that the father has given to me, I have kept in his name. God's gonna finish his work because that's the kind of God he is. Uh, we love you guys this morning. I do wanna remind you again that we met our giving goal. There's no reason for you to continue to give um, unless you wanna get just give to the church and have a supply to some ministry or mission. You can, you can do that, of course, anytime you want to. But we met our giving goal. I don't want you to say anything you know, publicly. Don't paste it on Facebook and all of that because the teachers don't know that we're buying the, the tables. We ordered the tables and when they come in, it's gonna be a surprise for them. We're just gonna have them delivered to their rooms and they're gonna be tickled to death. And you guys made that happen. You guys partnered with us in the ministry, just like Paul told the Philippian uh, believers there, we're partners in the ministry. And so thank you so much for your giving. We love y'all. We'll see you tomorrow. Good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. Peace out.